Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Cyber Files here on Hebden TV. Manuel here, your host as usual, this time joined by Arne Logisch. Hi there. Hey, thank you for letting me be here. Yeah, I can let you be here every time you want. <laughs> you, can, you can exist here every time you want. Oh, that's great, thank you. <laughs> All right, so more than again, we talk about uh, blue-white control. That's right. We are going to have a look at your cyber configuration and also the cyber plans against all the Death Shadow decks yeah. because you have the same plan for everybody. Yeah. Just easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also the cyber plans versus Eldrazi Tron. But as usual, we will start with a quick overview on the main deck configuration. Yeah. So your list... The first thing I would like to ask you is, can you explain a bit to those who are not really familiar with the format and the, or this deck in particular, mm -hmm. what is the main game plan of blue-white control and what are the key cards of the deck? Yeah, a blue-white control deck is basically um, a control deck which tries to shut down the game plan of the enemy or the opponent and then drop one haymaker and finish the game with it. Okay, okay. That's okay. basically the game plan. The main game plan. Yeah. Okay, very good. Key cards. Um, Path X and Supreme Verdict helps to kill uh, opponent's creatures. Yeah, so you have a sort of removal package. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I have counter spells like Cryptic Command and Mana Leaks, and also Snapcaster Mage, which uh, rebuy things out of the graveyard. Yeah, you can recycle quite a lot of cards of in course, there. Of course, of course. Okay, um, so that's the element of control, we would say. Yeah, Snapcaster, but Cryptic Command, and Mana Leak. They allow you to control the game. Yeah, but this in this meta we have another aspect, and mm -hmm. it's uh, land control. Okay. Um, you can cut out um, decks out of mana because the mana base gets greedy. Yes. Um, they play so few um, basic, basic lands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's why we play spreading seas and ghost quarters and also some tech edge. So uh -huh. okay. this helps to um, also control their mana base. Okay. Okay, yeah. so usually it's like the split, two tectonic edge and yeah, two yeah, basically. cost quarter? Yeah. Okay. And uh, the, the whole play set of uh, Spreading Seas? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. one of the best cards in the set. Uh huh. Okay, that allows you to draw a card as well. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Which is always good for control. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay, so you control the game, Yeah. you remove creatures, but you also have to win. So yeah, I guess you right. have some weak conditions in there. That's right. One of the main... Win condition is Celestial Colonnade. Mm -hmm. You activate, activate it for five mana and beat. <laughs> yeah. And um, we also have uh, Gideon Jura and Gideon of the Trials and Jay's Archdeck of Thought. So okay. sometimes you win with the deck of the opponent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's All also right. possible. All right. Um, in particular, the Gideons, what are their roles? And how, how, they, how they win the game? Gideon of the Trials is uh, what control decks really needed. Because okay. the emblem and um, the fog effect wins certain kind of uh, matchups. Okay, okay. So the emblem, the ultimate, yeah. that's yeah. the key. That's, that's the key. really a key. Okay, very good. And the Jays instead? Is there other matchups? You have different planes walkers because you went to where you want to have an answer for each single matchup, let's say. You want to cover more possibilities? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. um, Jace is really good in this matchup because uh, in in certain matchups, yeah, because um, a lot of decks play <laughs> lingering souls to grind enemies down or fairies or something like that. And um, Jace buys a lot of time. Mm -hmm. it's okay. Like plus one, and the enemy is okay. stalled out. <laughs> okay. So in certain matchups, you need to take it even slower and gain even more time. Yeah, of to course. Win. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And to fix all of this. Zero Visions uh, helps finding these pieces and gives consistency to the deck. Okay, so you have something that keeps everything together. It's a glue. Yeah. <laughs> it's a glue. <laughs> yeah. It's a vision glue. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So we mm, talked about the core. I would like to talk about the flexi slots now. Yeah, we have um, only two flex slots because the deck is tight in general. Uh-huh. Um, okay. I was running one irrigated farmland. It's this blue-white uh, cycle land out of, um, what is it? I don't know. I have Among no Cat, idea. I think. Oh, out <laughs> ah, of, okay, of, one of the new ones. Yeah? Why I'm not up to date yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. um, I was running it. It was great. But okay. uh, this time I want to uh, try Supreme Will. It's mm -hmm. this new card out of Hour of De Devastation. It's basically uh, three mana for a mana leak or impulse effect. 
yeah. which helps consistency and certain times you can counter things. And uh, the other card is Think Twice, which helps grind mm -hmm. against certain decks. Okay, sort of like a draw engine in there. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty clear. And about this one, the first thing you mentioned, the Supreme Will, yeah. you have it because of the flexibility? Yeah. You have it because yeah. Yeah, you want to have an, an additional counter spell or something that helps yeah. you... Yeah. To find Getting the supreme wording okay. or a cryptic command for uh, for the next uh, thing that the mm -hmm. enemy drops. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. All right, I think we set it all for the main deck configuration. We can start having a look at the sideboard. So off we go with the main, <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. the main thing of yeah. the show. So you have one supreme verdict, two rest in peace, one condemned, one Virginian click, one Elspeth sons champion, two dispel, one cryptic escape, two negate, one timely reinforcement, two stony silence, and one Geist of Saint Treft. So, the first thing I would like to ask you is, what kind of sideboard is this? Is this a sideboard that helps you to get better in the bad matchups? Or is it a sideboard that is tuned for a specific meta game, I would say? Or a sideboard that tries to cover a wide range, as much matchups as possible? What, what kind of sideboard is this? Uh, this Sideboard, I would say, is um, <clears throat> um, a sideboard which helps me in the bad matchups. Okay, so for the bad matchups. For the bad okay. matchups, yeah. And uh, also for some um, meta decks, mm -hmm. I would say. So a bit of both. Yeah. yeah. Meta game and bad matchups. Best of both worlds. Okay, okay. best of both worlds. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what are the bad matchups? <laughs> 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 what are the matchups that make you just gaze in the sky and say, why me? <laughs> yeah, um, I would say the big mana decks. Big okay. mana decks is really pain in the. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we don't go farther, but you guys at home understood. Yeah, and uh, so Titan Shift, for instance. Uh... Titan Shift is really bad for me, yeah. and also Tron decks. Yeah, but Tron is isn't that bad because of the spreading seas and the ghost quarters and the tech edge. Mm -hmm. But uh, big mana decks, Titan Shift is really pff, okay, nearly unwinnable. Right, but. So in the next video, I would like actually to, when you come back, mm. we talk about time to shift, the cyber plans in depth, what to board out and what to board in. But, yeah. Yeah, but this time we covered Tron and that's, that's also yeah. nice. So we have a tough matchup we can talk about. Okay, very good. So the first thing that I'm interested in is the Rest in Peace. Mm -hmm. The two copies of Rest in Peace. Yeah. Why two copies? Why is there? Um, rest in Peace is great when you have one in the, in the game. But when you draw another, it's bad. So you only play two copies. It's sometimes just a I won, uh, I win button. Just uh, drop Western Peace and you nearly win. Yeah. But um, you don't draw much of them. So. Okay, you don't want to draw too many of them. Yeah. So That's two right. is the right number. Yeah. Helps you, of course, against anything that is based... On the graveyard? Yeah, like Dredge, like sh Shadow decks, like Tarmogolf, like nearly every deck. Yeah, well, very true, because uh, with, uh, when you're facing Jan mid-range and stuff like that, for instance, yeah. it shrinks the Goifs. Yeah. If you're facing Death Shadow decks, Tazigor and all the dev creatures yeah. are no more. Even those early versions that, that, that have Delirium mechanics yeah, and that, that, stuff like that. Of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, I, I totally understand the inclusion, and most of all, um, I understand the point playing only two because you don't want to throw too many of them. Yeah. Open in hand, the three rest in peace, you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> two what? dead cards in your hand, basically. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. So another card that you play in two copies, Dispel. Yeah. I've seen Dispel before. I didn't see actually two copies of Dispel so often. So you want to see this card yeah. a little bit more often. Yeah. Why? For what matchups? It's great against combo decks. Mm -hmm. Or uh, com company decks, because okay. Collect Company is an instant spell. And uh, Titan Shift also have some removal. They play Nature's Claim, or some lists play Beast Within, or um, the Pacts. Yeah, very true. Yeah, it's great against Ad Nauseum, because uh, Ad Nauseum is an instant spell, and you counter for one mana, what is really good. Um, it's good against Burn, it's... Against, against uh, it's good against 
almost much. everybody. <laughs> yeah, you see, it's yeah, 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 yeah. I can talk till tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, we're talking about a lot of decks that use a lot of instants. Yeah, instants that are annoying you because or win the game. Yeah, or win the game. So you want to take care of those, and yeah. uh, this spell is the cheapest and perfect way to yeah. deal with those. Exactly. Yeah? That sounds safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs> Next. Uh, we have a couple of removals here. I mean, one mass removal and mm. one spot removal. Yeah. So Supreme Verdict and Condemn. What is the role of those in your sideboard? Um, so you play three Supreme Verdicts in the main board. Okay. And in some matchups, Supreme Verdict is just a game winner. Okay. So you want to have four. Yeah. That's against elves or um, affinity or creature-based decks that are die. That die from the Supreme Verdict. Yeah, you just do one reset. Yeah. And then uh, you are in big advantage already. You can start controlling exactly. the game after stabilizing. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So you want the fourth one just to make sure this happens as soon as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the spot removal, the Condemn? Condemn is so great in this um, meta game because um, it's awesome against Shadow Decks. <laughs> mm -hmm. They drop low and want to um, use their life as a resource. And Condemn says, nope. <laughs> 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 Condemn is, uh, they overextend with two, shadow, uh, 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 two shadows and want to beat me, and I Condemn one and the other dies on the spot. <laughs> yeah, very true. Yeah. You can do a sweet two for one there. Yeah. Oh, that's really nice. That's really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah because of the life gain, of course. It's also good against uh, aggro decks because mm -hmm. it's like a path to exile. These decks try to hit you, mm -hmm. and you can condemn. It's like another path to exile, mm -hmm. even with no downside. Okay, okay. It, even in some, uh, what happens to me was in a burn deck, uh, in a burn matchups, I was dead on board, <laughs> but I activate my colonnade, and eat him, it. <laughs> and condemned it, and live one. Okay, yeah. okay. And sometimes gaining one turn more yeah. is enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Sweet interaction there. Right, so row, second row here, and you don't click. What's what's that for? We all when dealing, we all know when dealing click. When yeah, dealing we know what it does. Yeah, yeah. What 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 matchups would you like to side this one in? When dealing click is great against combo decks like Titan Shift, Ad Nauseum, like every combo deck. Mm -hmm. And uh, when dealing click has this nice thing which helps you to race because you flash it in, you don't tap out necessarily mm -hmm. and, and you can start beat yeah true very true so you can start also putting some pressure yeah mm -hmm. that's what you need against uh, combo decks okay so mainly for the combo there. yeah right so main deck you have already um a sort of suite of planeswalker but here is another addition in oh, the sideboard i love her uh, you love her <laughs> oh, of course <laughs> i saw that gaze in your eyes okay so <laughs> elspeth sounds champion yeah um which matchups and why this Elspeth, because of the abilities that he has? Why, why did you choose this card and why? Uh, um, what matchups is really helpful for? I played her in the main deck, mm -hmm. but um, in this meta game, I would say it's not a good choice to play her in the main board. Okay. Because six mana is too slow. And in okay. some matchups, it's you, you drop her and then the enemy uh, wins on spot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Against Ad Nauseam or combo decks. Or, yeah, sure. So... But against uh, creature decks, this uh, the Elspet is one of the best card. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You lay her down, protect her. It protects herself, and end up with her and just GG. Okay. So you play her. You do the plus one ability. Yeah. Three soldiers yeah. already. Uh, yeah, as you said before, you can mm -hmm. protect her. Yeah. Or just establish some presence on the board, and uh, yeah. Second ability, you remove a big creature. Yeah. Ultimate. Is that the way you want to go for? I mean, when you play Elspeth, you want to win with the ultimate of Elspeth? Or it's just a control asset, but you want to you wanna have a different win condition? No, it's just, I've a, ju just, a, just the ultimate and then... Oh, you go for the ultimate. Yeah, of then. course. You really want to do that. Yeah. So you want to play this one in the right matchups. Yeah. It's a creature-based matchup. So yeah. I really say. Yeah, of course. Okay. But not too fast, probably, otherwise... Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like um, Tron decks, uh, Etrazi Tron or um, <coughs> mid range stuff. Mid range decks, all mm -hmm. even shadow decks, even um, 
Ejunt or whatever. Ejunt, yeah, in, in, yeah. In, 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 in every mid-range decks that don't have any combo. Ah, okay, 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 okay. So no, just so. pure combo. Countess yeah. Company would be too fast. So with that one... It's too fast, mm, yeah. Okay, okay. Very good. So the role of Grafdigger's Cage, I think it's pretty clear. Another Graveyard Hate. But yeah. maybe not only Graveyard Hate. Yeah, it's not only Graveyard Hate. Mm. Um, today, people play a lot of co Collected Company. Yeah, we just mentioned it a few seconds ago. Yeah. 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 And Grafdigger's Cage is just... Uh, Shuts down the engine. Yeah. It's, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, also in some control decks, because when you play against Jeskai control, they play in Nahiri. Yeah. And they can search. Um, they can search um, their Emrakul mm -hmm. or uh, elected uh, or or against. What's it called? The other weak condition Koth, they Koth, have or Koth, Koth of the Hammer. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, one thing comes to my mind was uh, Quarter Calling. Also yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Sure, all these cards like collective collective company and mm -hmm. the cards that, that allow you to search your library yeah. for a creature because they can just exactly. doesn't enter because of the, the effect of the Grafdigger's Cage. Exactly, and it's okay. good against stretch and, and so on. It's yeah, so definitely uh, yeah. an addition. Yeah. Is it a card that you would side in in the mirror match? White-blue control versus white-blue control? If you saw Snapcasters in the, in the game one, would you side it in or... Keeping your Snapcasters active is more important. Um, that's also, it depends on the deck. It's UV mm. control gegen uh, UV control. It's not a choice I would do. Yeah, you want to keep your Snapcasters live. Yeah, I want to mm. do, uh, keep my Snapcasters live. But against Jeskai or something like that, they play more Snapcaster Mage than me. Okay. UV control only plays uh, two Snapcaster Mage or yeah. sometimes just one. Yeah. Um, but Jeskai plays. Uh, four Snapcaster Mage because they play bold and much cheaper spells to re they want to rebuy. Okay. So um, against Jeskai would board uh, Grafdigger's Cage or even Rest in Peace. Mm -hmm. They also play Logic Knot and so on, uh, Delve Counter spell. So that's more. Um, and that's interesting then. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, but what's the Delve interaction with the Grafdigger's Cage? Actually, that doesn't really help. No, no, I, 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 I meant Rest in Peace. Ah, the Rest in Peace. Sorry, yeah. I, I lost you there. <laughs> no problem, no problem. No problem. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> right, so we have the last row here, the last four cards. Yeah. Two copies of Negate. More counterspell. More counterspells against um, combo decks or burn matchups or in the mirror match or... Yeah, that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Where you need more counterspells yeah. just to survive in the case of burn yeah 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 exactly <laughs> or yeah survive as well in the case of combo just to be, make sure they don't cast their key card that's right yeah and uh well yeah that's pretty self-explanatory the, the timely reinforcements timely re reinforcement is uh, great against burn mm -hmm. because it buys you time it's good against aggressive decks like um affinity or okay yeah it's basically six life and three one one soldier that buys time and it's they can jump block so they can allow you yeah. to survive a few more turns yeah, yeah so this is an asset for yeah again versus the aggro strategies yeah a lot of uh, people like to play um leyline of the the white leyline yeah leyline <laughs> of sanctity exactly but uh, in my opinion it's just a combo card mm -hmm. um okay. it's good card but yeah. uh, only on the opening hand and it's okay. a bad top deck so okay, okay. i would Play timely reinforcement for burn matchups, and this card gives more versatility. Yeah. To the to your deck. And this is always a good uh, top deck, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, you're always happy and, to draw this one. <laughs> and you can rebuy it with your Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, that's also true. Yeah. So you can actually use it twice in a in a game. Yeah, that's no, also yeah, good. Exactly. Okay. So you mentioned affinity. Yeah. I'm looking at Stony <laughs> Silence, and oh. the connection is pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Affinity and affinity only, or. No, it's uh, great against um, Lantern Control. Mm -hmm. um, Which you used to play, by the way, in the past. I was playing Lantern Control. <laughs> you were a Lantern Control guy. Maybe you will come back to that, that deck maybe. someday. Maybe. For a video here. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, Lantern Control, Affinity. It's good against uh, Adrazitron. Mm -hmm. Really good, because they can use their... What was it called? The Ballista. Yeah. 
just a normal creature. Very with, true. Very yeah. true. We will see that afterwards when we go a little bit in depth with yeah. that matchup. Yeah? That's right. But absolutely right. Um, it's great against every affinity, uh, artifact based deck. I would mm -hmm. say. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Artifact 8. Yeah. Plain and simple, but covers a few different matchups. Yeah. Yeah. The first connection is affinity, but actually there is more than you can do with this card. Last but not least, one copy of Geist of St. Draft. Geist of St. Draft is um, what you really want to have in your opening hand against combo decks because it's a really fast clock. And um, in some matchups, it's also a blocker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> sounds weird, really sounds weird, but um, sometimes it's good against burn. Yeah. Um, they deal a lot of damage to the self because of shock fetch, shock fetch, shock sure, fetch. Sure. And guys only needs to connect two times. And yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. And sometimes you can block their, I don't know, of Great Revel or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, true. It's just uh, one thing like uh, Vendillion Click helps to raise in these mm -hmm. combo decks. Mm -hmm. I don't know if uh, a burn player would actually attack you with the Eidolon if you have this one in play. Yeah. But that's also good for you anyway because yeah. then you just slow them down and this is what you want to do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other matchups that you would side this one in or? It's only against combo decks or burn decks. Mm -hmm. or, okay. you, or matchups you really need a fast clock. Okay, so the, the fast finisher that you need yeah. before the combo decks combo out yeah, and uh, the burn burns you out. <laughs> but this uh, one thing, um, this Geist of Draft has hexproof and it's good again in the mirror match mm -hmm. because they can remove it and they bought out their supreme verdicts and then it's in the ah, board. that's interesting. Yeah, and they can remove it. It's impossible for okay. them to remove it. So if you feel that your opponent... In the mirror match, he is quite likely to remove yeah. all the supreme verdicts. You side this one in, yeah. and there is a, just a, a threat yeah. they have no answer to. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, very good, excellent stuff. I would say that's it for the cyber overview. Yeah. We can now start talking about the specific matchups that we have for this episode, and uh, I would like to start with the Drazi Tron. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you're facing this deck. What are your objectives in game two? Tron decks, or uh, Trasi Tron decks, um, plays Chalice. Chalice of yes. the Void is really annoying. Yes. And you know the game tends to go long. And uh, you cut things in your deck that are bad against Chalice on the on one. Okay. So you one of the objectives is basically playing around Chalice of the Void. Yeah. Because okay. it's really good against us. Okay. Uh, another thing is um, Eldrazitron bought in more, more Planeswalker or more removal spells like All is Dust, which mm -hmm. really shuts our game plan down because we spreading seas and we have detention spheres and we have our Planeswalkers and so on. And we have Stony Silence up the sideboard and you want to stop this All is Dust. Okay, it's so having an answer to All is Dust. Yeah, and you want to have more removal spells for their creatures. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, very and good. And you want to drop a haymaker that they can deal with it. So, so also having a, yeah. like a finisher, they yeah. have no answer to. Yeah. Right, very good. So um, let's go a little bit in depth now. And, of course. Uh, you have the same cyber plans on the play and on the draw. Yeah. So that doesn't really There's make no difference. any difference. Okay. Yeah. So what do you side out and what do you side in in this matchup? I side out uh, four Serum Visions and one Gideon of the Trials. Okay. Five cards in total. Yeah, five cards in total. Okay. There's usually a chalice on one, and okay. the game tends to go long. Yeah. So um, Zero Visions is a bad top deck. It helps with consistency, but um, in my opinion, uh, in my experience, Zero Vision was really bad in these matchups. Okay. So just side them out, and you only have um, the Path Exile that are um, disrupted with the chalice. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. Okay. And the Gideon? The Gideon is really good in this matchup, but it's really bad against Reality's Measure. It dies on spot. You fuck ah, okay. them, and Reality's Measure comes down and just kills. Gideon of the Trials. Okay, so it's a card that you don't want to have in this matchup. Sometimes it's good. It's really situational. It's situational. So situational, yeah. we know that is like not good enough. Okay, so what comes in? Another Supreme Verdict comes in. Mm -hmm. One Elspeth, Sunshine. Yeah. Um, one Negate, and two Stony Silence. 
Okay, okay. So why those cards? <laughs> <laughs> Supreme Verdict is great against this deck because it sweeps up the board and resets the board and helps you from this spot. Um, Elspeth is just the big haymaker that nearly can't deal with it. Okay, so that's the win condition you want because they have no answer to or nearly no answer to? Nearly no answer. Yeah. With, uh, if you untap with uh, Elspeth, you're just one. Okay. Um, another negate helps with their game plan to disrupt you. Is yeah. They're bought in more planeswalkers or um, all is dust and it's just nice. Or you can counter Chalice with it and so on. So okay, if they go for Chalice yeah. not so early, you can yeah. still say no. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Right. And Stony Silence is great against them. It uh, shuts down the Expedition map, uh, the Ballista, the Relic of Progenitors, everything. All these kind of stuff. Equipments, Better Skull, everything is just okay. shut down. Okay, so the actually Stony Silence is somehow best card. The Silver the Bullet, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, the, card, the best card against uh, yeah. Eldrazi Tron. That's right. Okay, so quite a few cards that can help you out. Resetting the board with Supreme Verdict. Yeah. Shutting down all the artifacts with Stony Silence, maybe more counters to, to deal with uh, whatever they want to do that is not a creature. That's right. And of course, a uh, big finisher with uh, Elspeth. Yeah. Right, very good. That sounds crystal clear, as I like to say. <laughs> <laughs> and we can just uh, go for the next matchup. Yeah. Blue-White Control versus Death Shadow decks. Yeah. All of them. All of them. I will ask you again, what are your objectives in game two when you're facing this deck? It's nearly the uh, same game plan as game one. You just try to shut them uh, or just cut them off of colors because they play such greedy mana bases. Okay, so disrupt their land, their the, mana base. That's the same game plan as game one. Um, one thing comes after sideboard is um, Rest in Peace to shut them down their graveyard engine. Okay. So okay. Delph spells get... Uh, much expensive out of uh, because of rest in peace um, or Tamogolfs when they play um, Jun Shadow or something like that uh, or Lingering Souls and so on. Just the graveyard is a really big thing in the stacks and uh, mm -hmm. shutting down the, the graveyard is yeah. just game winning. And that's it, I would say. Okay, okay. Pretty straightforward yeah. and I think very effective as well. So we can see a little bit little bit in-depth what you side out and side in in this matchup. On the draw of the play, again, still it's, the same. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very good. So what do you side out and what do you side in? What you side out is all your counter spells. Okay. Um, counter spells that are only counter spells. Scripted command stays in. Okay. But um, your mana leaks, you negate in the main board. Mm -hmm. That's what you board out. It's a great card. Yeah, but they sure. play too much uh, disruption spells with okay. Thoughtseize and Inquisition, and they can easily play around your counter spells. Okay. And it's a okay. bad top deck when you're behind. When you okay. need removal spells, you don't want to draw a, a counter spell. Mm -hmm. Sounds pretty cool. So what comes in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two rest in pieces, one Supreme Verdict, one Condemn. Okay. That's it. The role of these cards? Well, the rest in peace we explained already. We don't have to repeat ourselves. Yeah. But you have uh, one more spot removal in terms of Condemn. Oh, Condemn, yeah. I love this card against mm -hmm. Shadow Decks. Yeah, because you can do the sweet one for two that we mentioned before. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it can also deal with other creatures that yeah, they have. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And the fact that they gain life, it's always good for you because you don't want them That's right. uh, to go too low in life. Otherwise, then the shadows are too big. The only mm -hmm. card um, Condemn is bad against this deck is Tazigo because it can use... This uh, the, the the ability yeah 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 and it's not like a path to exile okay it needs to attack and when they know about the condemn it's bad but the blowout mm -hmm. like we mentioned two for one is mm -hmm. awesome okay okay and the uh, f fourth copy of supreme verdict is they can't counter it. It's just... Yeah, sure. Their stubborn denial, yeah. if they run Rixis yeah. Shadow, yeah. just doesn't do anything. And they have just to exactly. clean the board. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, I would say that's it for this episode. We said it all. So thank you very much, Arne, for being here. Thank you for having me here. Absolutely a pleasure. And uh, <laughs> a big thank you to all of you who've been watching this video. I hope you enjoyed because we surely did making it. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and if you want to reach us on Twitter and Facebook, 
facebook.com slash headontv, twitter.com slash headontv. And of course, stay tuned on headontv for more content to come. And for now, it's goodbye. <laughs>